Hello friends, welcome to IntelliGear and this review of the Zippo Lighter. Uh, I wanted to include this in my Firestarter series uh, just so it's not overlooked that you can take a Zippo along with you when you go camping. Even if you don't smoke, this is a, a great way to get your fire started. It's a lot less complicated than using some of the other fire starter choices out there. And um, unless you're in a dire survival situation, if you're just trying to light a campfire, casual camping, this is a great uh, alternative. So in this video, you will learn how to properly operate the Zippo lighter. You will learn how to fill and change the flint on the lighter as well. And finally, but most importantly, you will learn how to safely store the Zippo lighter. So this particular Zippo I picked up for $10. And um, as you can see here, the windproof lighter. This is the satin chrome finish. So let me uh, let me get a knife and open this up and we'll get right into it. I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Got this uh, partially out of the package. So this is pretty cool. Just lifts right out. This is kind of like a felt, kind of fancy, you know, holder, whatever. Pretty cool. And what does this say? Congratulations on your purchase of this quality Zippo product. Yep, tips and hints and all that at uh, Zippo.com. That's cool. A little sticker here, what does this say? Oh, sad little child there. No, this isn't meant for kids, sorry. Sorry children, don't play with matches, don't play with fire. Alright, let's peel this sucker off of here. Um, ever since I was 18, I've owned Zippo lighters. I bought my first one on my 18th birthday. It was a pretty cool one too. It said Genuine Chevrolet. It was brass. Oh, this is a little sticky. Now there's a little bit of the sticker left on here, but I'll show you a trick in a minute on how to take, take that sticker off of there. But anyways, yeah, my first Zippo was, uh, a brass one and it said genuine Chevrolet it was like stamped in there it was pretty cool alright so <clears throat> this is obviously for people that aren't familiar with Zippo so that that's how you open it and you pull this piece out I'm trying to pull this out without bumping the camera so you pull this piece out here and as you can see let's bring it up close you have a wick and a, uh, a flint and then of course your flint wheel okay and then this little lever here now make sure when you pull this out that you keep this lever down because if you go and you put it back in there like this the lid won't close you're gonna have problems and you can bend the hinges and things like that okay so then on the bottom here you have this um, this little um, uh, thumb wheel screw whatever you want to call it now one time when I was uh, I think I was at work. There was a coworker, and he's like, "Do you have a Do you have a small screwdriver?" I'm like, "No. What do you need it for?" And, and he's like, "Oh, I'm trying to get this out of my Zippo." I'm like, "Really? Take the case, okay? Take the case, and you can uh, open it that way." So, once you got it a little bit, you know, um, once you break break it loose, then you can just do it with your thumb. You see there's these little um, groove things on the screw head so you can turn it with your finger and thumb. Alright, so the spring comes out and then there's a flint. There's a flint inside of there. Okay, so if you were replacing a flint you probably would get something like this and what you do is, let's bring this up close, tip it, tip it down, and then see one of them goes in there and then turn it like so, turn it like that, 
Now I'm having a little difficulty because I'm trying to look through the viewfinder here. Um, and there. And then it'll drop right in there. So now we got a flint in, in there. And then close this back up. Which it's a brand new spring, so it's a little little bit of effort. But there you go, get it started. Alright. And tighten this back down. And then um, if you're gonna use the cap again to tighten it, don't do it too much, just a little ever so slightly, okay? So <clears throat> excuse me, so that's how you do the flint. Now there's um there's two ways you can go about storing an extra flint because, you know, how long are you going to carry this around before you lose it? So what you can do is you can put a couple extra flints in the bottom. Now you can just drop them down in here and um, when you need an extra flint then, you know, you got one. Or you can put it under this felt here. Okay, so you see how this has a little hole in here and it says lift to fill you know you don't want to stick it down in that hole that hole's there for a reason you don't want to plug that hole so either put it in the bottom or you can put it under under this and then put it right you know in between the cotton and um, that little uh, stopper, I don't know what you call that thing, but anyways, you put it in there, okay? Now, I, I will tell you that I've had um, the experience that when I put my flints in between this and the, the wick, um, they got soaked in the, the lighter fluid and they kind of deteriorated. So, now I noticed, I didn't, I, I've never noticed that with the Zippo type, the gold type here, of flints but I had some Ronson all flints and that happened to them and the paint came off and stuff so I don't know if that's um but I just decided to put it in here now the only thing is if you put your extra flint down in here um, and then you're going to use it as a screwdriver make sure you pour this out first and keep it in your hand so then you can unscrew okay because otherwise it's going to fall out you're going to lose it on the ground and you're never going to fi find it again and I speak from experience on that, okay? So anyways, um, that's the flint. The lighter um, fluid part, what you want to do is, once again, you don't need any tools, you know, you got your, your lighter fluid bottle here. Um, just take your cap and place it under to lift this up, like that, okay? That's all you got to do. Now this is Ronson all, but I'm gonna show you guys something here. Zippo, okay. So for those people that are like, yeah, I saw never put Ronson all in my Zippo. Hmm. Well, guess what? It's made by Zippo anyway. So whatever. Lighter fluid. All right. And then lift to fill. You got to lift this thing up to fill it. Now generally, what I do is I just um, fill it up until I see it starting to pull up and um, basically you gotta use your best judgment here when you fill this thing up um, but it's better to underfill it the first few times than to overfill it so, you know, just let that cotton soak up the fluid and then come back and hit it again until it just starts to pool. I mean, just barely starts to pool. And I'll see if I can get it in here for a close-up. Uh, this isn't cooperating with me. This little piece needs to go back down in there for demonstration purposes. There, all right. So, okay. So, there we go. Um, you can see it's just starting to kind of get saturated, so I might hit it with just a little bit more. Alright. Not too much. Okay, now, 
what you want to try to avoid is having it drip out of the bottom. That's when you know it's full. You see how this is soaked now? Okay? And I'm, I'm doing this video for a reason because I'm trying to prevent people that are first timers with that. But you see how much fluid is in there? That's way too much fluid. Alright? So, if you can see it's dripping out of the bottom. If that happens to you, it's fine. It's no big deal. Just shake it out. Um, make sure that you're not doing this on a surface that can be damaged. And just shake it out real good. Okay? So, there's quite a bit of fluid in there. And I know there's some stupid armchair monkey sitting there like, Oh, he overfilled it. Well, there's two reasons I overfilled it. One is because I wanted to show what can happen. And then, of course, the other is because I'm looking through a viewfinder. So, anyways. Um, now, I was going to show you a little trick to get rid of um, that gummy stuff. Is just take a little of the, uh, the lighter fluid on your finger or a towel. You know, and you can rub that right off of there. See how see how good that works? So you can actually use this uh, lighter fluid to remove gummy stuff as well. All right. Okay. So we've shaken this out really good. Stick your, you know, either put your, your flint under this uh, felt thing or put it down in here remember if you put it down in there that you're going to use this to you know you pour the, the flint out first okay now remember I was telling you this little thing make sure that you don't accidentally bump it up because see it won't close you're like what did I do wrong oh no make sure see it won't close make sure that that stays out alright so there you go just like that and um, you want to make sure that there's no um, fluid still on your fingers or on the uh, the outside of the Zippo because it will catch fire okay and then you're gonna wanna drop the lighter on your carpet or you know whatever <laughs> and then you're burning stuff you're burning stuff down alright okay so anyways um, lighting it's pretty simple you know, there's not much to it, but I'm just doing this video for the layman, and I, I don't want to hear a bunch of comments from Zippoholics, and I mean, it, it, good comments, not negative ones, you know, I, I, I don't need freaking know-it-alls. I make videos for laymen, okay? People that maybe have never seen a Zippo, or they want to get one, they've never had one before. Uh, I'll tell you another thing. I had a coworker, and this was a long time ago, I mean, this was when I was like 18, and you know he was my age too he's like he he lit it and he's like how do you put it out <laughs> and he was serious he wasn't joking um it's easy to put these out okay you just boom you put it out now one more thing about overfilling if you overfill your zippo that's not a good thing and you know you may be thinking yeah but it, i'll have more fluid no this fluid will seep out of here and if you keep this in your pocket uh, then you're gonna get a chemical burn on your skin and it's happened to me it's happened to my brother it happened to my brother real bad one time he filled that sucker up <laughs> he had a big red rash right on his thigh from it sitting there leaking through his pocket so um, don't overfill your Zippo if you do it's okay just shake it out like I showed you and then um, you know you just wanna you just wanna light it light it up shake it around a little bit be careful when you're shaking it around don't drop it okay so that's um that's how you operate it uh... there's all sorts of little tricks and neato things out there uh... that you can do with your zippos and but that's not what this video is about um, there's the thing where you can i'm not going to do it to this one because it's brand new and i actually want to keep this one nice but you can uh... flick it like this and the lid will come open but if you do that, you're putting stress on the hinges and this, let me bring this in for extreme close up. Let's see here. If you, if you see here, this is flush. This is really, you know, for 10 bucks too, really good um, uh, engineering craftsmanship. 
So, but if you flick it open like that, doing little tricks and stuff, you're gonna stress the hinge and then this will have a, you know, it won't be flush like that anymore. So I don't recommend doing tricks with your Zippo unless it's just a junker Zippo that you use every day and you're trying to impress the girls. Um, yeah, okay. So, and then the, the last thing about the maintenance on this is the wick. The wick here, let's bring this in close. Um, you can change the characteristics of your Zippo by moving this wick. You can, you can move it away and, um, you know, it'll burn differently. You can adjust the flame height by pulling this wick up or down. Um, and let me really bring it in here so you can see. Let's get that. Um, you can see this wick is reinforced with metal with, uh, I believe that's copper, like a copper strand that's woven through it. Let's say you can push through the hole because you can replace the wicks in these. You, they sell them. I got one around here somewhere, but I couldn't find it. But it's just a little package. It comes in a little package. And, um, you know, that's a little bit more complicated. But there's, if you hang on to your, um, your instructions, which you can see here, <laughs> this was actually glued down in there. And I lost the corner, but that's okay. Luckily, it didn't mess up the piece I wanted to show you. So, where was I? Okay, yeah. So, um, if you look here, it shows you the proper way to thread your wick, okay? So, basically, when you push the wick up in there, you want to pack some cotton in here, and then, you know, curl it back around, pack some cotton here, curl it back around, pack some cotton, okay? That's how you're supposed to put the wick in there. Um, eventually, this will get it'll get really black and carbon carbonized and if you don't keep your your zippo properly filled and you're trying to light it when it's almost out of f uh, fuel uh, fluid it it will um, the wick will wear out quicker so make sure you keep your zippo take care of your zippo and it'll take care of you um, if you keep the proper amount of fluid in there your the wick's gonna last longer alright that's the best way I can describe it now as far as storage goes for these, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're not a smoker and you're not using these every day, eventually the fluid inside is just going to evaporate and go to the angel's share, okay? It's going to go bye-bye on you. So if you're going to put this in your backpack, you know, you, you could probably do the, the plastic um, and that would be fine. I'm not sure about the metal one. You know, the, the, the Zippo fluid also comes in a metal uh, can. I'm not sure if I'd want to put that in my backpack because it seems like it might be more prone to uh, puncture and leaking and getting all your stuff messed up. So what you can do is you can buy one of these. This is also made by Zippo. It comes with a little ring and an extra thing for a, a flint. Um, but what this is, is a, uh, a fuel bottle, okay? And oh, I really got that on there, good. And all you do is you just unscrew this part here. And let me bring this up here where you can see it. You see how there's that hole there? That's the air hole, so you want to pour it this way. And um, let's see if this is, yeah. I just want to make sure I didn't burn myself. Um, hang on, let me get this open again. and show you how to fill it up with that all right <clears throat> excuse me I know this is a lengthy video but hopefully it'll help someone so you see how you got to put that hole up like that and then you can just fill it up the same way okay and then um, you see there's like rubber down in there so it really puts a good seal on it Puts a very good seal on it. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this open or not. But anyways, okay, I'm not going to mess around with this. But you can get this, you open this piece to fill up this vessel and then you screw it back on. I really got it tightened up there, so I'm not going to attempt to mess with it right now. But that's how you can safely store your Zippo if you're not using it every day. Um, I mean, I keep this in my EDC. If you are interested in watching my EDC video, um, I'll put it in a link right here. 
and um, this is in that EEC kit. So I always have Zippo fluid on hand. And uh, yeah, so, oops, there we go. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the Zippo lighter. I appreciate you guys watching. If you made it this far into the video, I think I deserve a like. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, feel free to share my videos and subscribe if you like the video. I'm gonna put some links at the end of the um, at the end of this for other videos that you may be interested in watching. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Thanks a lot. Until next time, friends. Be well. I'm doing it sideways on the table so I can get the shot, but I'm just using an empty bottle here. And as you can see, pretty easy. Um, it's a lot better than just having the corkscrew alone, like on a Swiss Army knife. A C4 LED, which can be seen here. And then of course the uh, reflective optic down in there, which is pre-focused. Very little artifacting. You have a tight center beam. You'll notice that there is no black hole in the middle of that beam. Paul Fisher has certainly left his mark. His pins are used worldwide by space explorers circling the globe. His pin was used on the shuttle program and is poised to be used on future NASA missions. So hopefully the next time you use your space pin, remember just how amazing it is and the amazing man who made it possible.